Welcome to another episode of Modern Block. Thank you for joining me. So yeah, interesting week last week. Um, I think some interesting team choices have been made this week for the box. So yeah, let's let's dive right into it. If you if you enjoy my videos, please like, subscribe, please share, comment down below on the team selections, your opinion. Let's get discussing down below. Okay, so I think the biggest things here is obviously some of the changes from the box. We've got Papir at, at scrum half. Um, we've got <coughs> Peter Steph moving to lock. Elchis Neyman in uh, Peter Steph moving to flank. Elchis Neyman moving to lock and Dwayne from Yale eight. Some of the bigger changes, obviously overall the team hasn't changed a lot. Some move around in the back uh, of, the, of the scrum and obviously the uh, Fap to Papir change. So let's just first talk about Papir. I think um, I think it will suit him this kind of game style. I feel, as I've said previously, Scotland almost played like a super rugby side. They're very, very fast paced, love to run the ball. Not like uh, very very different to the rest of the the, the the northern hemisphere, and I think it's going to be it's going to favour the box actually to play that style. And there's a reason why I think we actually have a pretty good record against Scotland because of that. Uh, most of our teams are used to the style; we don't have to adapt a lot. And no normally that means that South Africa's team doesn't adapt a lot, which, have, as I've spoken to previously, is something we do very badly. It's probably our biggest weakness as South African side. We don't adapt well. We alter our game so much that we actually don't overpower the other team. We almost play into their style. So it's probably a good thing that Scotland don't play very much like a super rugby side, very fast-paced, something that I think um, Papi's has a lot, a lot of experience in and should be quite strong. It is his debut against probably one of the best scrummies in the world, so that's going to be a tough one. But yeah, I think that's going to, so it's going to be interesting to see how that all plays into the whole, into the factor. So Papi, I think he really needs to, as long as he can keep himself calm, reduce the box kicks, play the style of rugby he plays with the Bulls, I think he actually has a lot of hope. Um, with Pollard and his outside, they've got a lot of experience together, so I actually don't think I'll be too concerned in that position. But my favourite change is what I've been moaning about the last two games, bringing Peter Steph back to the flank position. I think it's the right choice. I think uh, Rassi saw it in last week's game when he was moved there. He really does seem to be able to get a, a part of the game a lot more, and he's not as nullified. I feel in the middle of that scrum, but his, his biggest tackle dominance is around the, just off the scrums or just in the, around the pillars. And I think at that position, he has a lot more ability to actually be part of the game. And he's showcased well why he should be there. Dwayne from the eighth man, I think, also gives him an opportunity to also not be locked down uh, by a side. He, I think he'll have more options from the eighth man position where he can take either the blind side or the open side. So I think both players, I think, does their suitable position. And I, it's good to not null such quality players when you put them in the wrong positions. So that's great to see. Other than that, I, my, one of my favourite players in Super Rugby is Achis Neyman, so I'm excited to see him start. I think he has really got a lot of hope. He has started before the season, but I think it's going to be great. He really has a stunning popping game and really knows how to get players into space. I hope that he can uh, bring that forward with Franco Mostert. He's had a great uh, deal with Adelio Diogo, so hopefully that can happen and we can get some quality there. But yeah, on the Scott side... Very South African player with Scottish team. I think there's like four or five South African people who were born in South Africa playing in that team, which means South Africa also have to worry a little bit about the fact that there's not going to be surprises. Most of these players know exactly what um, is coming. They know exactly the, the quality of, of the, the South African opponent they're facing. So it's going to be interesting to see. Scotland, of course, have had a stunning record uh, at home since the World Cup. They're really, really doing well, especially at Murrayfield. So there's going to be a lot of opposition there. Scotland have done great this year. And as I said at home, they really have, I think they've only lost to the All Blacks. Everybody else they've beaten. They've beaten Ireland, they've beaten England. So there's a lot of quality in that side and they're definitely not to be uh, brought down. So I think the, 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 physic, the, the biggest thing here is going to be, just like in a Super Rugby game, it's going to be all about matching them physically up front and then being able to find the exploits and also keeping the ball in hand. It's all about the fast pace, getting the ball in hand, not letting the breakdown slow down. Whoever's team can let, lets their breakdown get slowed down, I think is going to be the biggest affected by this. As we've seen more and more this year, that is becoming a pivotal part of the game, is being able to slow down the opponent's uh, breakdown, just like England did to New Zealand last week, and that's going to be going forward. So I think that's probably where the games we want to lost. Can we get our uh, ball stealers in there? Kitsoff, I feel, has had an okay season, but he really, he's, he's, well, he had a stunning season. But an okay end of year tour, uh, the biggest thing for me, I think fatigue is going to say. He's, he's solid in the scrum as always, but his open air, open play is being affected. I don't think he's stealing as many balls. Dwayne Vermeulen also, I think, is suffering from fatigue. And I think the Vogt team in general, especially the forward pack, is starting to show signs of it. So I think that is a little concerning, but I hope hopefully they can push through for the last two games so we can get some quality rugby. Talking about uh, Kitsov, obviously Vieppier now taking him on in that position, another South African, I said from Scottish side. 
stunning player. He's always been great. I loved him in um, uh, when he played here in South Africa. And I think he's also has had some injury woes, but back to, I think, his top position as a reason why he's playing in the Scottish starting lineup. So that's going to be interesting to see how these two South African giants face off. Both of them very well known for being stocky and very low center of gravity scrums. It's going to be great to see them face off against one another. On this side, lay draw against Papir. There's <laughs> worlds apart. So yeah, Papir, debutant really effectively as a starter and hasn't had a lot of time in that Bach jersey. He's played well for the bull, Bach Bulls, but it's still going to be a questionable one. Whereas Laidlaw is a staple at number nine, a legend at number nine. He's been Scotland's uh, man for 65 tests. He really has continued to quality. And I think his biggest thing, he reminds me a lot of um, Fr uh, Frida Priya at his, at his prime. He really knows how to read the game, be, on his, be, be a nuisance. Not a nuisance like Fuff, but rather a nuisance in the sense of knowing the laws, knowing how to 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 inter interfere with the other team's game, pull out as many, many uh, players as possible and position players very well. Whereas I feel Fuff is a fox terrier. This is much more of a, a quality, like he's more precision in that field. So it'll be interesting to see how that all plays into it. So yeah, and on the, I think overall it's going to be a strong game. South Africa are going to expect a tough opposition, but I think South Africa could still take it by about three or four. Uh, not a lot. I think they're a stronger side than France, so we were lucky to win the France game. So it's going to be a case of can South Africa pull from the fatigue and can they at least showcase with the positional changes the quality of time, the team they are. As long as they avoid kicking, I think we should be fine. So on the other side of it, we've got another game, the Ireland-New Zealand game. It's going to be very interesting. Probably the best Northern Hemisphere team versus the best Southern Hemisphere team. It's pretty much a final World Cup final quality game. Both teams selecting some of the best players they've got out there. And I really am excited to see how the two face up. In New Zealand obviously having a little bit of a cough up against England last week. Obviously they won it in the end. As I've always said, a good team is a team that can win even when they play badly. Um, are going to try and showcase what they can do. And in Ireland's been waiting for this game the whole year to show that they are the world's best after winning Six Nations. So both facing up is just going to be an interesting game. In my opinion, New Zealand... I think, considering that they're at home, considering that um, Ireland have got probably their best team that they can put on the field, I've got a feeling Ireland can pip this one. Especially if they utilise what England used last week about slowing down the ball, ensuring that they play the games at the parts they can play, and really giving um, when when tackling tackling All Blacks back. If you can tackle All Blacks back, they really don't know how, they don't have the positioning ability to be able to move around. Although the All Blacks are showing more and more their adaptability, so it's going to be all about the 80 minutes. England did great for 60, couldn't hold for 80. It's always been like that. New Zealand, you have to hold them back for the 80 minutes. So that's going to be interesting to see if Ireland can do that. But if any team can, it can be Ireland. So I'm actually going to give Ireland the benefit of the doubt here. I say they're going to take about, about five. I think they're going to really do well. But overall, the really, really great thing to see about this is how tight these Northern Hemisphere, Southern Hemisphere derbies are becoming. They really are no longer about Northern Hemisphere trying to just fight, just beat one or two Southern Hemisphere but really taking, uh, taking it to them and being some quality teams. So, um, yeah, I think it's just the winner as us, as the rugby rugby public. So, yeah, let's get into it. Let's enjoy the games. Thank you very much, guys. And, yeah, comment, subscribe, uh, and leave your comments down below. Let's, let's chat over, uh, after, the, after these games. Thanks, guys.